Don't adjust your watches, Time Splitters is back. An Injustice animated movie is coming. And fans of D&D and pinball from a galaxy far, far away are really going to want to get a VR headset now. All that and the latest and everything cool today in The Rundown. Hey, welcome to The Rundown, everybody. My name is Victor Lucas, and it is my pleasure to bring you the latest in everything cool. And this show is brought to you by our friends at the Gaming Stadium. They are Canada's leader in online esports tournament facilitation. They've got tournaments happening every weekend that you don't want to miss out on. You can join up with them at tgs.gg. And today's episode is actually dedicated to our buddy Graham Coombe, who had a great comment the other day. He said, Xbox has been playing some next level chess for quite some time. I'm very interested to see what it takes, uh, where it takes them in the next 10 years. And it's going to be equally interesting to see how their competitors change in that time as well. Whatever happens, though, I'm excited to see even more creativity and new ideas from great, great developers across the globe. By then, we might even get another new Battletoads game if we're lucky. Uh, yeah, that's a great comment. I think that uh, Xbox has got everybody that's into the video game industry kind of scratching their heads, you know, wondering what kind of big, massive move they're going to play next. They, they've they been sort of in this interesting position for a little while where they could afford, not financially, but they could afford to make some big plays and take some big risks um, and not freak out shareholders or their fan base, you know, and... Uh, uh, I think that it's going to be very, very fascinating to see what happens when all of their developers start delivering new games. It's going to be crazy. Uh, all right, let's get started with Graham's Rundown. The big news that's happening all over the internet, I think it uh, kind of broke the internet today, is that D Deep Silver is bringing back Free Radical to develop a brand new Time Splitters game. Uh, D Steve Ellis and David Doak, who are veterans, I I I'm sure they're both from Rare. I know David Doak is from Rare. And those guys split off to make Free Radical. And of course, they came up with uh, the Time Splitters franchise, which is, which is a first person shooter where the uh, it's almost like fusing a first person shooter with time. Pilot, one of my old favorite classic arcade games, you're bouncing to different eras. So you might be, uh, you know, in the future, you might be in Chicago in the past. It started kind of primitively on the uh, PlayStation 2, and then there was a better sequel made. And then I think the last time that we saw this franchise was back uh, during the PS3 era. And it, it never sold like stink. It never kind of lived up to the um, you know, the, the hopes and dreams and expectations that we had from this team after the massive success of Perfect Dark and GoldenEye especially, uh, but this was a beloved franchise because of its quirky sense of humor and all of the, the different artistic attributes that you could apply to the game. There was just lots of different ways in to enjoy the experience. Multiplayer was a blast and it was just tuned. It was really, really well made. I mean, that was the thing about this franchise is that uh, David Doak and his colleagues all had so much experience in this space and when they got better hardware with more horsepower there, they were able to deliver something really ambitious, which is kind of par for the course with that team. Or, you know, that assemblage of people. I know that different people came in and out of Free Radical. Uh, that's a long history. That's a, I'm sure there are many documentaries on YouTube about Free Radical. But that's huge news. Don't know when we're getting it. We don't have any footage to show you of any new game. It's been long rumored. Lots of expectation and uh, suspicion that something was happening with uh, Time Splitters. And it was great to have... Uh, a new Time Splitters confirmed today, so uh, kudos to our friends at Deep Silver and uh, the renewed Free Radical. I can't wait to see what this game looks like. I hope it's awesome. Uh, it's not like they don't have, they had a lot of competition, you know, when they brought out Time Splitters, partially self made by the success of GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. So many companies went, hey, wait a minute, there's a huge market for first person shooters on these consoles, and so many different games came out there. Uh, but now it's even bigger. Now it's even more massive. So we'll see what happens, but I am super excited about that. I'm also super excited that I actually missed a little bit of news when I was talking about some of the DC animated stuff that's coming up. Yesterday, I talked about the Long Halloween Part 2, which is going to be coming out in July uh, and then uh, released through August. And then there's going to be um, a collection of the Long Halloween Part 1 and Part 2 that's going to come out in 2022. This is the animated uh, movies 
that are based on the very successful graphic novel series where all kinds of awesome Batman villains are a part of the sequence. And, uh, you know, Batman's at his wit's end. He's got lots and lots of uh, drama to deal with. Can't wait for that. But what was interesting is that I missed that in the announcement, the press release that DC and Warner Brothers shot me, you can see it right here. I saw that there was going to be a little showcase bit on Blue Beetle. There was going to be some Batman animated stuff and a DC Universe movies flashback. Uh, but there was also going to be an Injustice movie. And that is incredibly exciting. Of course, this is the video game franchise from NetherRealm, uh, which leveled up considerably by the time they got to Injustice 2. Incredible storytelling about a Superman that has kind of gone rogue, which is something that we have seen in the DC comics before. Of course, we saw that in Batman versus Superman, where the character kind of just feels, you know, self-righteous, and he can kind of play, make up his own rules and, and sort of play any cards that he wants to. Of course, he goes through some tragedy. But I'll tell you something about the story for Injustice 2. It was exquisite, and it was shocking. Um, I got some early play time with it, and I remember I was around with a bunch of other journalists and NetherRealm people were watching us all play, and we were playing through the story campaign, and we got I got to a point, and, I, and you know, I, I know many of you uh, can probably recall this kind of same emotion when you were playing the story campaign, but I just threw my hands up in the air. I couldn't believe it. It was so freaking shocking and cool. But I started to read the um, the comic series based around Injustice and got completely hooked there. So long story short, we're going to get an Injustice animated film likely next year. And there is more than enough lore to pull from all of these heroes kind of in battle against each other. It's a, a multiverse kind of tale, which plays well with the game. And it really does feel like, uh, you know, we're entering this era of everybody's got their own multiverse. But I guess that's what it means, right? Everybody, we're, we're in somebody's multiverse. Maybe I'm in a multiverse where I'm Batman. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, no, I, I, I just think that this is... Uh, <laughs> I'm such a loser. I just think that this is so fun uh, that we're getting an Injustice film. Uh, I do hope that, uh, you know, some of the colleagues from NetherRealm who helped to kind of tell this tale and put all of this stuff together are going to be involved in the building of this film. Uh, and I can't wait to see the cast. I hope Kevin Conroy plays our Batman. Uh, actually, I hope all of the game cast appears because they were all perfect. It was just so fun. Um, all right. Uh, uh, so stay tuned for more news on the Injustice movie. Uh, but right now I wanted to talk to you guys about what I did late into the wee hours last night. I had some fun with my Oculus Quest 2. So last night I've been I've been hearing a lot about this game called Demio, which is kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons type of experience in VR. It's meant to be played multiplayer. And I, you know, there's been some updates to the Oculus Quest. It runs at 120 hertz now, and you can, uh, I tried the Air Link on my PC and it didn't quite work. But there were some new titles in the Quest library for me to check out, and this was the one that I was most excited to play. You basically are, you know, across a table and you've got these little miniatures and you're, uh, you know, moving along a grid and then you roll a die to see if you are going to, uh, uh, be effective in combating the different weapons or the different enemies that you, you're going to face with the weaponry that you pick up. Here's some of the gameplay of me actually playing it. And, and you know, the interface takes a little bit to get used to. You're kind of rotating around the table. You can zoom in by pulling your hands apart. You can see me doing that right now. And then you're picking up the little characters that you're in control of. Now, the way that you would normally play this is you would play it like a multiplayer experience with people all around the table and everybody's their own character and you would take turns and you try to get through these dungeons and unlock the chests and defeat the bosses and all of the minions and the, there'd be surprise encounters and all that stuff. But it was so freaking cool. Now, I didn't have the guts because it was my first time playing it to jump online. Um, but I really want to because this looks like an incredibly cool social experience where you're all in it together. You can heal each other when you one of your uh, characters falls. All you have to do is kind of uh, put your character on top of that. And you can see I can pull up from different card attacks and stuff. It's just so clever. It's so well made and it's a perfect fit on the Oculus Quest. Um, I, I played it on the Quest 2, but I imagine it would play great on the Oculus Quest. It's not a huge game. 
pardon me. It's not a huge game in terms of download size, so you can, uh, it, you know, you can jump in and start playing right away, which is pretty cool. So I would imagine that it runs fine on the original Quest, but it ran beautifully on the Quest 2. I was very impressed with that. And the other game that I wanted to check out because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd is uh, the Star Wars Pinball VR experience from Zen Studios. Uh, they've got eight tables that are built into there based off various movies uh, like The Mandalorian and Star Wars A New Hope and Empire and Return of the Jedi. There's a Rebels table. I looked at four of the eight last night and uh, I'm super impressed. I've always enjoyed, this is some of my gameplay here, I've always enjoyed the, uh, and don't make fun of me for not being great at pinball, but I, st I love it. I love video pinball and Zen has been supreme with this they've always done an excellent job and as you can see there's lots of decorative detail around the table you can see uh, mando flying off in disgust that i lost the ball there uh, and you can see the child over there uh grogu um, and so super cool super fun i loved the new hope table there was this really fantastic sequence and i think we'll get to it here in a second where you know it's interactive and it's video game pinball right so you don't have to play with real physics um, and, uh, you know, what it would take to really be able to maneuver and manipulate little elements on the table. You can take all kinds of creative license, and that's exactly what happens uh, in, in the middle of your Star Wars, you know, your New Hope Star Wars experience here. Um, you can see some of the targets kind of shift and make room. You can see some of the arrows where you're supposed to point and uh, trying to hit, and then um, what will happen is that everything will light up and you'll actually see some of the uh, the geometry of the table will change and I don't think that would be physically possible but you have like this mini table in the middle of the board this is why I love video pinball and suddenly I'm targeting the TIE fighters that are flying around inside of that little mini game inside the wider game and the multi balls coming down and you know what's amazing in VR is that the the physicality of it and you're looking around the table and you know, it's like you're really there. This was also impressive. This was a collectibles table where you have all of these action figures. It's an homage to collecting the toys around Star Wars. Uh, and so you've got like Kenner Star Wars type characters built into the table and all kinds of great detail there. A uh, little uh, uh, Millennium Falcon. And you'll see some of the toys walking around and flying around you. You can see an ATST over there and an AT, at over on the other side. Uh, and then there was a Rogue One table and uh, what's his name? Krennic? Uh, the, the commander guy, he would just pop up from behind the table and freak me out. And in VR, you really feel it. It's like the guy's just standing right beside you, and it's, uh, it's incredibly creepy and super cool. And, man, I had an amazing time, and it was uh, one, at, one, at, you know, one in the morning, uh, and I <laughs> took the thing off. I'm like, oh, my God, uh, I, I got to get to sleep here. But uh, I didn't want to. I was having a blast. Both of those experiences are, I think, must-plays. I would say that the Star Wars pinball game needs a little bit of a resolution bump. It didn't quite sort of look as glossy as it could have, but it played beautifully, and it was a blast to jump into VR with the Oculus Quest 2 last night. So um, I just wanted to share my experience with both of those games. Um, but I've got a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about. Lacuna is a new uh, game that's out right now on um, PC. This is a uh, uh, sort of a detective sci-fi type of experience, certainly uh, evocative of Blade Runner. I love this trailer. It has fantastic music. Um, you know, it's this old school pixel adventure kind of style look to it. Uh, but it looks like there's also some pretty cool action in it, and there's also some uh, interesting kind of detective uh, solving that you have to do. You see flashback sequences in here. I was super impressed by what I've seen. I haven't played it, and it's available right now, so I definitely intend to download this and uh, give it a look-see, but I wanted to share this trailer with you guys. You should watch it with, uh, you know, the full music and the audio blast. There's some great voiceover work in here, but uh, the game is called Lacuna. And, of course, I also wanted to share the latest little tidbit that we got from Disney uh, about the Loki television show. Tom Hiddleston is in this new little teaser that's out there, and what he does and I thought this was very clever, is he catches people up, you know, because there's a lot of lore and there's like a decade's worth of, more than a decade's worth of history now. And so he takes 30 seconds to explain where we're at in, in Loki's story. And he goes through all of the different movies and all of the scumbag things that he's done, uh, you know, um, fighting with Hela, all of it. And uh, 
you know, uh, pretending to be different characters and, and different people. Uh, and so he gets us kind of queued up for the Loki TV show, which is coming on June 9th. I can't freaking wait for that. And they're moving everything to Wednesday. So in case you have gotten accustomed to watching Marvel and, and now the Star Wars shows on uh, Fridays, Loki is a Wednesday. One last thing that I wanted to tell you guys about. I got the code for Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World. I'm, I'll get that right. Uh, and it's based on Monster World 4, which is a classic, uh, I think, Sega Genesis game. And um, the the publishers at In In wanted to remind me to tell everybody out there that if you... This game looks beautiful. Like, it just looks so cool and artistic, and I love the art style. It's like a throwback, right? It's a, it's a complete side-scrolling action-adventure game with lots of great abilities and stuff. I can't wait to play this. I'll be playing it this weekend, and I'll have some thoughts for you next week. Uh, but if you wanted to get the original Monster World 4, there's only one way to get it, and it's with the uh, um, uh, the retail boxed version of the game. It's not coming with the digital version of the game. So you have to uh, pick up the the retail version, and there's you know it's at Amazon. It's a bunch of different places out there. But I thought that was pretty cool to clarify because I'm sure a lot of people are looking at this as a potential download and they're expecting that they're going to get the little freebie of being able to play the classic. I can't wait to compare the two, by the way. I want to see what that classic game is. I didn't play any of those Monster World games back then. Um, but that is coming out next week, and I am going to have some thoughts for you uh, as soon as possible. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with a fresh episode for you, so please come back for that. Thank you for subscribing, and thank you, of course, to all of our EPN members. We'll see you tomorrow, and until then, play forever.